There are a whole bunch of lobbing plants in Plants vs. Zombies too. Lobbing plants are the plants that lob fruit and vegetables in the air, kind of like a catapult. Most of the lobbing plants are in the armament family of plants. Some lobos launch cabbages, some launch rice, and some of them launch buds. And today I am going to rank every lobbing plant in Plants vs. Zombies 2 from worst to best based on how good they are across all game modes. And oh, I almost forgot the usual disclaimer. This is opinion based so yeah, don't murder me in the comments. And I don't think mistletoe counts as a lobo. The bottom three lobos are ranked by a community poll. Except Boomberry because Boomberry is actually kind of decent. Number 17, Cabbage Pult. Cabbage Pult received the majority of the votes for Walsh Labo, and I can see why. Cabbage Pult suffers from similar problems of Pea Shooter. It just gets power creeped almost immediately. Cabbage Pult's gimmick is to counter graves by lobbing over the graves, if you count that as a gimmick, and has similar damage per second to a Pea Shooter. Most players stop using Cabbage Pult after literally day 3 of Ancient Egypt when Bloomerang is unlocked because it's just better at everything. Overall, Cabbage Pult is heavily power creeped and does not have much to offer. Detail. Number 16, Pepper Pult. Pepper Pult has the potential to actually be a solid plant, but fails due to a very sluggish recharge, a high sun cost of 200, but only mediocre damage of 50. For comparison, Cabbage Pult costing 100 sun deals 40 damage. Pepper Pult is bad value. And keep in mind, Cabbage Pult sucks. The only thing Pepper Pult has going for it is the really small splash damage and its ability to warm nearby plants, making it kind of useful in Frostbite Caves, but even then just use Fire Pea Shooter. Detail. Number 15, Spore Shroom. It seems people like this purple multiplying mushroom as it only got 9% of the vote. The Spore Shroom's main problem is lacking enough damage to do well anything. Spore Shroom's gimmick is spawning other Spore Shrooms when it defeats a zombie. The problem is, the new Spore Shroom usually spawns in a not very great place, usually near the front of the lawn, and sometimes won't even spawn half the time. If there was another plant or any grid item on that tile, I think Spore Shroom could actually be a lot better if Spore Shroom got buffed to always spawn a Spore Shroom on a zombie kill no matter what. How it would work is when a zombie gets killed and there is a grid item slash plant in the way, the Spore Shroom will spawn in the closest available tile, but Spore Shroom finds itself in detail. Number 14, Looming Heart. The glorified cabbage pult. Looming Heart will lob heart thingies. I don't know what they're actually called. At zombies that deal more damage the more they hit that zombie. This does not sound too bad, but the problem is the damage output is very bad, and you are a lot better off using most other plants. Blooming Heart falls into detail. Get it? Because the zombies fall in love, so Blooming Heart falls. Anyways. Number 13, Blastberry Vine. Blastberry Vine is probably the weakest of all the vine plants, lobbing berries that deal light splash damage in a 1x3 tile area. And since it is a vine, you can put it on top of other plants. The plant is the definition of mid. Who is going out of their way to unlock this plant? At least you only need 100 seeds to unlock Blastberry Vine. DTO for just use something else. Anything else. Number 12, Conal Bolt. Conal Pult is a decent lobbing plant that has a 25% chance to butto zombies, stunning them for 8 seconds. Additionally, the butto does extra damage and can be a great option for stalling gargantuas and instantly dealing with the flying pelican zombies. Conal Pult falls short in the damage and crowd control department, not dealing very much damage and struggling to defeat anything above a conehead but still a decent stallo that can come in useful sometimes. C tier. Number 11, Boomberry. Boomberry has an interesting gimmick of attacking plants at the back of the lawn rather than attacking the closest zombie, which can be used to deal with the Z Corpion zombies, the catapults, and the fisherman zombies. Boomberry can be a very good supporting plant, stunning and dealing splash damage to zombies in the back of the lawn. The drawbacks of Boomberry is that Boomberry needs to be at level 3 or higher to start attacking in 3 lanes. Once you get Boomberry to level 3, it becomes a decent plant. Before level 3, Boomberry kinda sucks. Because of this, Boomberry is not the most accessible plant, 
And since Boombailey targets zombie in the back of the lawn, it leaves itself vulnerable to getting eaten. Boombailey does not defend itself, so you need some form of support like Blockly. But overall, not too bad. B tier. Also, don't use Boombailey's plant food, it's not that good. Number 10, Aki. Apparently, Aki is slept on and not that bad of a plant. I don't use Aki too often, but it's not that bad. And somewhat similar to Bloomerang, but a lobbed version, kinda. Aki will shoot seeds landing on zombies' heads and then bouncing to the next zombie, hitting up to four zombies. The consensus is Aki is alright, not too bad. B tier. Number 9, Toki Pult. Even though the name would suggest Toki Pult lobs Tokis, that is not the case. Toki Pult lobs Tofu Tokis at the zombies. These Tofu Tokis damage zombies and are similar to the zombie Tokis, except Tofu Tokis fight for you rather than against you like the zombie Tokis. Toki Pult excels at stalling Gargantuas to the end of time as Toki Pult can throw Tofu Tokis faster than a Gargantua can smash the Tofu Tokis. All around, Toki Pult is not too bad of a plant and tends to struggle when there is a high amount of zombies in a small space or just high eat DPS in a small space because they will eat the Tofu Tokis before they can get much damage in. B tier. Number 8, Sapfling. Sapfling is a very underrated plant, but that does not mean Sapfling is not good. Sapfling, as the name implies, flings sap at zombies. The sap slows the zombies by 50%, making Sapfling an excellent support stalling plant. While at class by other stallers such as Snoopy, Sapfling makes up for that by only costing 50 sun. Sapfling flings in the B tier. Number 7, Sling Pea. Sling Pea is like Pea Pod, but it shoots peas in the air that land on zombies' heads. Sling Pea is one of those plants that is not bad at all, actually pretty decent, just for some reason it never gets used. When spammed, Sling Pea can be very effective at clearing hordes of zombies or taking out high health targets like Gargantuaros and mechs. Overall, Sling Pea is pretty good and goes in A tier. Number 6, Melon Pole. Melon Pult is a great lobbing plant that lobs melons at zombies. You probably could have figured that out from the name. Anyways, Melon Pult deals splash damage to zombies in a 3x3 area. Super effective for big crowds of moderate to low health zombies, but bad against high health targets. Melon Pult goes in A tier. Number 5, Apple Mortal. Apple Mortal is similar to 3 Pedal in the sense that it attacks in 3 lanes, but Apple Mortal also stuns zombies for a short time. When you spam down enough of these guys, the zombies barely move at all while being bombed with apples. Apple Mortal's plant food kinda sucks though, but overall, Apple Mortal goes in A tier. Number 4. We have Banana Launcher as a bonus ranking. Even though Banana Launcher is not a lobbing plant, it is a banana and that's all that matters in my book. Banana Launcher is the best banana in Plants vs. Zombies 2. Heck, it's the best plant in Plants vs. Zombies 2. Air striking zombies with bananas. Banana Launcher is bananas and going in banana teal. Okay. Now we move on to the top 3 Labos. These Labos will be ranked by the community similar to the bottom 3 plants. I personally think all 3 of these plants are amazing. Number 3, Sticky Bomb Rice. Sticky Bomb Rice is an excellent lobbing plant able to lob rice that goes boom dealing splash damage forwards and backwards. Sticky Bomb Rice is especially good in Arena because zombies that are stuck with the Sticky Bomb Rice's rice will give extra points. This is good with Impale too. Also, did I mention she attacks in 3 lanes? Yeah, Sticky Bomb Rice is OP. My small nitpicks is that Sticky Bomb Rice won't directly attack graves and has a slower recharge at low levels. Other than that, Sticky Bomb Rice is a great choice and goes in S tier. Number 2, Dusk Labo. The doped out cacti needs no introduction. Arguably the best shadow plant and arguably the best Labo. Dusk Labo lobs buds at zombies dealing splash damage in a large area, down 3 lanes when powered. For the low low cost of 150 sun, yeah, it's broken. As I said in my other video about shadow plants, Dusk Labo gets the zombies so stoned they just die. Easily an STO plant. Number 1, Winter Melon. Voted the best Labo by the community, Winter Melon will lob deadly icy melons at the zombies, dealing splash damage while also stalling zombies in a 3x3 area. 
It does not matter how many zombies you throw at a winter melon, it will win. There could be 500 buckethead zombies, winter melon would defeat them because the chilling effect groups the zombies up, slows them down, and deals tons of damage to all of them at once. Heck, 500 gorgs is no problem. You just need some spike rocks in column 3 for the throne imps. The downside of Wintermelon is the high sun cost of 500, but honestly, it is worth it for how powerful Wintermelon is. There is a reason basically all PvZ2 mods nerf Wintermelon into oblivion. Wintermelon is S tier. That is all the lobbing plants rank. Here is the final list. I have some bonus fun facts about Labos for making the video like Blastberry Vine, Sticky Bomb Rice, and Boomberry can hit Parasol Zombie even though they are Labos. Blooming Hurt is the first money costing plant to be changed to unlockable with seed packets. Aki seeds cannot bounce onto an imp cannon but can still directly hit the imp cannon. Toki Pult synergizes really well with Blockly because Blockly's stun will stop zombies from eating said Tokis. Apple Mordo and Aki use similar or even the same sound effects. Most lobbing plants can be used to deal with submerged snorkel zombies. And with that, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and hitting that subscribe button.